welcome to another edition of the eSpot with Camille. The eSpot is your location for the latest in entertainment, beauty, and design from the people who make it. Thanks for joining. Oh, I can't get enough of that intro, but I can today because it's another great day. It's another episode of the eSpot with Camille, and I'm your host, Camille Cower. I can't wait for you to meet my guest today. Her name is Andrea Bowman, Andrea Mona Bowman, and we've had her on a few times, like to the point now, I can't remember if it's been three times, four times, but it's never enough because A, she's my Shreveport sister. For those that don't know, that's where I was born. Uh, but then her work consistently amazing like she's worked on so many great films from young rock emancipation well that's actually a tv show but emancipation the color purple musical which is coming soon in 2023 i'll see what i can get out of her but without any further ado let me bring on the woman of the hour or 30 minutes let's try to keep it 30 minutes but probably not <laughs> we'll try <laughs> the edited version might be <laughs> Yay, she's back i'm so happy to have you thank, thank um, you for having me <laughs> girl anytime every time i it's always a fun time to have you and just hear all the juicy behind the scenes stuff that you get to do <laughs> When yes. I say juicy, I'm talking about hair, okay? Of course. We're, we're not going to get into all the politics and all the other stuff because I want my girl to keep yeah. getting these wonderful jobs and uh, accolades and award nominations oh, to the point that she's you. already going to win. I'm claiming it for 2024 because I accidentally Ooh. already wrote it in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, don't get mad at her. It was me. I was like, oh, this must be a typo. This must be an old bio. It doesn't say that she's Oscar nominated because in my mind, you were Oscar nominated this year for Emancipation. But I just rewatched it today this morning. Oh, thank you. I was completely in the right mindset. And I have to be honest, when I first started it, I thought it was in black and white. And then I noticed it was sepia. It took a yeah. while. And then and it has color in it, too. It does have color. <laughs> like it took a, like it was a to... different type of way of the DP and the director went yeah. to, to be able to bring you in. My mom described it as a historical picture that was moving. And mm -hmm. that touched me because that's what the intent was. We wanted to make sure that it was as authentic. And once you watched it, was drawn yeah. into it and followed Peter on his journey. And, and that's what I was going to ask because yeah. it's, um, well, so you're, hair, you're a trained hairstylist. You worked in the salons first, watched the previous episodes to see all the backstory because we're jumping mm -hmm. into um, <laughs> well, <I'm at> now. <laughs> bachelor's level of questions now. <laughs> no more <laughs> no more kindergarten and high school questions. We're the real stuff. We're, you know, you've been in it now and you're nominated for a bunch. Again, congratulations. But I, I was going to say that I noticed like it seemed almost like before it was on, like it wasn't, it wasn't as fine tuned. Like it wasn't as... I mean, it didn't seem like it was by accident, but you know, a lot of times you're on your phone when you're streaming things at home. And I just felt like every time I looked up, I'm like, whoa, wait, things are changing. Let me put my everything away and just focus because the visual of it all. But mm -hmm. when you first were interviewed for it, that whole process, can you like break that part down? Like, especially on a film like this, because it's so emotional. There's so much trauma in it. There's so many yes. hard scenes. Yeah. Well, with me, it was so funny is because I knew Peter's story from researching other shows. When I first ran across Peter's story was for the TV show Underground that was on WGN. And when we were filming, show. yes, I missed that show so bad. And <sighs> we actually shot it on a plantation that was in Baton Rouge. Um, that was a museum that they used. Um, and they had this whole big display of things in the front, you know, where you can buy things and stuff. And they had all these murals on the wall, even talked about 12 Years a Slave and all this kind of stuff. And that's when I realized 12 Years a Slave wasn't just a book. It was actually somebody that actually went through those things. And then I ran across Peter Pitcher. And I was like, well, if this is real, I wonder about this guy. So I started researching. And every time you research slavery, that photo comes up and then yeah. to uh, to learn that he was from Louisiana, the Atchafalaya area, and that he actually ran and actually fought in the war. And I was just like very intrigued. And that was in like, what, I think 2012, 13, okay. but always oh, from the other stuff that I have researched from, you know, anytime you go into period, it pops up. So fast forward to the uh, pandemic, we're shut down. I'm going through Instagram and on this page, this guy always posting um, black film and uh, mm -hmm. directors and different latest things that come up. And first one popped up was Women of the Movement. 
And I was like, wow, man, here goes. They finally get a chance to tell Emmett and his mother's story. And I was like, okay, God, okay, I'm going to be very specific, but I don't want to be selfish, but I want to be very intentional. If it's not me, please let the right hairstylist do this because I don't want ugly wigs, ugly makeup, ugly clothes, none of this to distract the story. I want the story to be told. That so part. next week, here come pop up. Will Smith and Antoine Fuqua doing uh, emancipation. Uh, Peter's story. I was like, oh my God. I was like, okay, God, I did pray about that one last week, but I want this one too, but I don't want to be selfish either. But oh Lord, please just let the right person be. I'm, I promise you, I just want the right person because this is his first story being told. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the next week came, Woman King. I had studied those women, the Dahomey tribe for Lovecraft Country, because mm -hmm. when we did that episode with Anjanu Ellis, that was the theme of those were the women that it was based off of. So I got introduced to them doing that research. And I was like, OK, mm -hmm. God, I know I did one, uh, the women of the movement and emancipation and uh, what the woman king, too. But Lord, just however, just make sure the right person get it. I mean, you're and, a gig worker. That's to be expected. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, please, God, I know I'm not the only black hair whisperer but I just really want these people's story told because mm -hmm. they had never been told and fast forward that was June and here come December I was up for the academy um, the oh god the Umbrella Academy in Canada and oh, they really? pushed it yeah I was I had got the job took it but they pushed it and then I had family situation and I couldn't take it and I was so hurt because I had gave my word, first of all, but I was like, I can't be in Canada 10 months either anyway, because they pushed it to 10 months. And three days later, they called me for the one, uh, the women of the movement. And I was like, wow, I really wanted this one. I was like, okay, okay. So I forgot about the other ones. In my studying for that one, the Holy Spirit told me, start researching about the 1800s. And I was like, you know what? I'm a teacher. I always practice what I preach. I tell my students when something come in your spirit, start working on it because you just never know and mm -hmm. prepare because something is brewing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was when to do start the job in Mississippi for Women of the Movement, February of that year, I get an email. Hey, Mona, we want to check out, you know, your availability for emancipation. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had to pull over because I was driving to go get some some uh, supplies and I was just screaming. My son was in the car because he was doing COVID with us in uh, Mississippi. He was like, Mom, why are you screaming and crying? And I was like, I, they call me about it. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, oh, my, you've been talking about this show forever. And I was like, yeah. So get into that phone call. And it was from a producer I never worked with, but he had got my name from another producer I had worked with years ago. And he said, and I asked him and I said, well, what do I need to send you? Because I want to sell it. I'm mm -hmm. like, what I need to do? And yeah, he was yeah. like, no, he gave your name. And if he said you're the one, you're the one. You got it. Okay, you got to kind of shout out that producer since he shout you out. You know, the whole point yes. is to put, <laughs> say those names in rooms. Mr. Todd Black. Yes. There, like, let me, <laughs> let me send my resume to that guy. <laughs> His name is Todd Black. He's one of the biggest, <gasps> most lovingest, sweet and affectionate and mm -hmm. faithful and mm -hmm. loyal. Because I met him on my first job, which was the Great Debaters with Denzel. And... He never forgot Mona B. So, yeah, I reconnected with them on fences. And he always promised me, he said, Mona, if it's, it's going to be a special one, I know, and I'm going to call you. Just just, just know I'm going to call you. Because yeah. how many years was that, right? Oh, fences was 2000, what, 14, 15, something like that. Hey, that's amazing. Because yeah, sometimes you think people have forgotten about you, but they're just waiting for the right project for you. So remember yeah. that actors that are out there. <laughs> <laughs> don't get that yes. one edition. They may be saving you yes. it may take seven years. But, but I just believe that doing other jobs this, though. Yeah, things yeah. that are for you, I feel like it's going to be full circle mm -hmm. to you. I'm a mm -hmm. firm believer of that because like I always tell people, I'm from a little city about that big and yeah. I never moved into the last six years of my career and I'm what, 16 years come April? And I never had to move. I never, I moved to Atlanta because I wanted to. It wasn't mm -hmm. because of work. Um, I just always went with the flow of how I felt I needed to direct my life because when I got divorced with my young my husband my ex-husband with my youngest son he was 
two years old and I promised mm -hmm. that I would not take my son away from his dad. So I stayed in Shreveport until he graduated and I counted leaving out of the courtroom. <laughs> okay, 2017, I'm moving. <laughs> and that's when I moved and I did that mm -hmm. for me, you know, but yeah. it wasn't for work. I just trust that your work speaks for you. That's my motto for my, um, mm -hmm. my production company is if you do the work, and you prepare, I feel like God will always put the opportunities and the people that you need in place for you yeah. to be able to accomplish those things. And I'm a firm believer in that's how I've gotten every job that I have. I hadn't solicited. I, I don't send out emails. I don't I don't chase it. I just yeah. let it come. And when it when it, I'm not working, I know that means I need to be home and working either on me as a person or with my family or traveling with mm -hmm. my family or attending mm -hmm. to things with my family. You know how I am about no, my yeah. family. My family is it. But it's always that coming back. When I first started, I was kind of <sighs> antsy about it. But now I'm rooted in it now that I know that what's for me and strategically set up for me, I'm going to be in that place. And all I have to do is just keep preparing. And just like now, preparing for my next three, I'm deep in prep right now. I can't disclose yet, but no, no, we, look. can't disclose yet, but it's three good ones back to back to back here in Atlanta. <sighs> and yeah, it's going to, y'all going to be like, oh, we, because I'm saying, oh, we too. Sure. <laughs> I'm just, just excited to be Follow her Instagram, our Facebook, <laughs> everything. Because that's what I love about you. So like, because... I don't know. Many people might not know this, but I, I, I pursued makeup artists on films. Like I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. but it was just like, wait, how many hoops do I have to jump through to get in the union? Yeah. I'm going to yes. SAC after. <laughs> like yeah. I, I like being in front of the camera too, but I did love. <laughs> and even my dad all the time brings up, Camila, you're so good at that makeup. Why don't you do that? Because I can't get in the union. Yeah. Granted. It's, it's, it's a process. Yeah, it's a process. And, and like for yeah. me, and I think that's part of why God drove me to Atlanta because mm -hmm. I've helped, I know at least like 16 or 17 people to get into the union. And that's the thing. Like you're, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Like you're always so good about sharing not oh, yeah. only what you're working on, some cute little behind the scenes without getting in trouble. Because, you know, just in case there's somebody <laughs> yeah. out there looking, she doesn't do anything on set. It's only in the trailer. And it's usually like rap day at that point. Mm -hmm. And nothing <laughs> in costumes. Because you know, I'm a producer's kid. I know. I know what not to repost at the same time, even if it's by accident. But anyway, uh, I like when it comes to once you get those scripts and so on or get the job, what is that process for you? Because you do break down the scripts, you do do all of that. But as far as like even building your team, do you because I was just watching this TikTok earlier, not TikTok, Instagram reel, where mm -hmm. they were talking about how. Nowadays, there isn't like one expert stylist anymore. There's one that's special in natural hair and um, sew-ins and wigs and this, that. Is, there, is that how you build your team? Like knowing what kind of process you're going to need, who would fit those roles? Or is it just like yeah. sometimes whoever IOTC sends you? <laughs> I pray. Well, IOTC don't get us jobs. IOTC just protect us on our jobs. Okay. Um, it's up to the department head. And when I'm leading or even when I'm keying, I'm normally in a position to where I'm the one that brings the flow of the extra additional help. Mm -hmm. And for me, I watch. That's why I like to go day play when I'm not on a job full time. I like to go day play to see the newer people and watch their skill set. Mm -hmm. But my first initial thing is pray because it's not just about the skill set sometimes. Sometimes it's about the person's personality. It's sometimes about um, the person's uh, availability and their drive. Yeah. If it's a show that's not really high demand, you know, some people I know I can put in this position, but if it's mm -hmm. a high demand, very quickly moving show, I know I can't get nobody that can't multitask because right. I'm going to have to go back and double check and pick up and all that. So it's, it's, um, I'll say like a five factor for me. It's mm -hmm. personality, it's skill set, it's, um, like I said, get up and go, um, availability and um, location sometimes. Because even when I'm on location, sometimes they want us to hire local. But I always try to bring a team that I know that can bring, because like 90% of my resume, you of course, you know, is period. So everybody think they can do period, but it's, 
not the same. Mm -hmm. So for me, I like to have people that know their technique, that use the actual products, that use the actual equipment. A lot of times people like to cheat and think that they're getting it, but it's inspired. You can tell when you put that next to something that has really been used, like I screenshot and I always do the side by sides to make sure that I am on track and very authentic with bringing any character to life. Because for me, character development is so it's so significant, especially for the actor that is trying to come, you know, bring this person into yeah. life, to life, especially if it's, it has been a real person. You have to dig deep and really go into that character development as well. So for me, I've watched over the years and I pay attention who has the pros and the cons, who fit this and who fit that. And then ultimately is how I feel in my spirit about who I need to bring yeah. as a teammate because we're with each other what 16 hours a day for what three to six months so i can't have nobody with a that's a real good skill set with a real pissy attitude yeah. working with me every day because it's, it dra it drains the energy drains and it takes away from you know what it offers into a trailer because we all become a family, not saying you got the love and mm, all that, but mm -hmm. it's out of respect and having a certain level of, I'll say it's a certain level of responsibility, you know, because yeah. for me, it's, I'm responsible for my team. So for me as a leader, I have to make sure that my team know they're responsible for me and the team as well so if we're all responsible for each other we're not going to come not saying people don't have bad days i'm saying coming in with that that mess you know mm -hmm. <laughs> you know everybody know it's across the board every job it's not just in film and tv it's across every mm -hmm. office have that one that's very um needy mm -hmm. and clingy and and messy and uh you know, insecure and, and jealous hearted and envious and all those types of stuff. That, I like to deal with people that are grown, that have gotten into that they know themselves and they know their gifts and they're not offended by somebody that does this better or a strong in this one. Or if they're strong in this one, they're not trying to downplay or make this other person feel like they're not. Because I always ask my team, are you good at finger ways? Are you good at such and such? Are you good at this? Tell me your pros. Also, tell me your cons. Well, you're not good at and it's mm -hmm. OK. Some people get offended when people tell and then they hold it against them. I don't. I just know if you're good with paperwork and not as good as blowout, I'm going to put you on that good paperwork. And I need you to work that good paperwork because that's a part of it, too, that yeah, a lot of people the continuity don't understand. of it all. Exactly. Yeah. Continuity mm -hmm. and just paperwork, making sure the additionals have all they, their ducks mm -hmm. in a row. That's a whole train in itself. And people you have to have people yeah. that have office skills that have also have hair skills and able to do both things because there are times that you're not going to be able to just sit there in front of the computer or just to be able to, you have to work, you have to work it. And mm -hmm. you, are, you, if you ever would have gave it a chance to see me on set, I don't sit down. I don't stop moving because mm -hmm. it's so much going on. And I just like to be ahead of everything for my teams, especially when I'm leading to make sure that they're being led properly. So the next day yeah. we can be, uh, you know, ahead of the game much as we can, because, you know, sometimes they change. <laughs> They'll wow. come in there and say, you know, we're not going to shoot scene three now first. We're going to shoot it at the end of the day after we've already got everybody done. And I'm like, OK, do you not know that we just did? All OK, no worries. Let's do that. <laughs> and then not just be able to do it, be able to do it in 10 minutes or less. That's the other part that a lot of people don't know, because a lot of people say, you know, you hear the bad talk about the wigs and stuff and the looks on a lot of shows and stuff now. But a lot of times people don't understand that production don't always give us time to give that look. Mm. They, they, they'll they say, oh, it's not going to be seen or it's not because they're trying to meet their quota as well. A lot of times right. they run into hiccups and have to change and rearrange stuff. So we're only trying to get all this done in 12 hours and they can't. So they're pulling and pulling. But that's why I try to do my trainings and teach other hairstylists to be able to learn tricks of the trade that you can be able to change a whole. I can change a whole hairstyle standing right with my set bag five minutes or less, totally change it without even having curling iron. See, I, but I, I would love to work on you <laughs> with you on set. Just to see the quick draw of it all. Oh my God. <laughs> the time I, when I tell you I'm quick draw, but draw, but I've taught myself that because I know mm. that's a necessity in this industry. Cause mm -hmm. so when you can't take them back to the trailer, what are you going to be able to do? Cause 
nobody going to hear the story and say, oh, the director said he wanted to change now and I didn't have time to go. That ain't going to be in the credits, boo. Ain't nothing going to be in the credits, but Andrea Mona Bowman, the barber head. Uh, mm -hmm. Lie. We're not going to let you go on camera looking crazy. Sometimes the polar actresses or actors be breathing hard and be like, oh, I look crazy. No, bro. No, sis. I got you. And mm -hmm. that's the other part, being able to give the actors that confidence to know that you're trained and have a trained team. And that's why I implore people, study, yeah. study, try to take mm -hmm. as many classes as you can. Even if you're not in the film industry, that goes according even for the salon. I still go mm -hmm. to hair shows. I still watch videos. I still subscribe to everything because trends change because I want to be current, even though mm -hmm. I do a lot of period stuff. But it's the knowledge in itself that you can learn something that you did last time this way. Oh, and I change it that way. You see somebody, I watch videos all day, every day. It never yeah. changed because I always, I'm always looking for that thing because I feel like whatever I put into it, God will bring it back to my memory. So in that clutch time, it's in mm -hmm. here. How are you going to bring something out if it's not there? You know it's what I'm like saying? Osmosis. It's yes. like, like and the same thing, like you can't sleep on the book, but if you look at the book, yes, and it will come and, it it's, and it's in there and it's in there and yeah. you're, and I'm a visual person. So for me, me if I see it, it's in there. All mm -hmm. I have to do is, okay, I need to do a certain kind of ponytail. Oh, you remember that bit? They pushed it, the middle side, put, put mm -hmm. it, and you got it. And that's how it works. That's yeah. how it works. So. I'm sure we probably covered this before, but I just, just in case we do have some newbies, what would be like your main tips you would tell someone that's just starting in the game as far as the differences of being in a salon as opposed to going to meet? Like if you're contemplating it and like, mm, what do I need to know to make sure you're at that point? You can't, you could jump in. Maybe not period piece, but anything. Well, I, I, well mm -hmm. I can't say just period either because guess what my first one was? Period. Piece, yeah. That I had never seen. You know how to use Marcel's, so that's a little <laughs> and, different. But I knew how. Yep, and I these knew how. These are like these flat, flat iron. <laughs> yes. You don't know how to use them. No see, I was already using Marcel, so that was my saving grace. You made a a, a great mm -hmm. point. I was already trained in how to do Marcel curling because yeah. it. If you don't know how to Marcel curl or do the figure eight, period hairstyling is not your thing. Mm -hmm. That flat iron will not give you the same look. It'll give you an inspired period look, but it'll it look not beautiful. Yeah, but yeah. it would not give you an authentic look because they didn't have flat irons then. No. So, were... yeah, what I would say definitely mm -hmm. is train, train, train. Mm -hmm. Try to Google and find as many period hairstyling, period books. I love Amazon. I'm, Amazon is my best friend. I think I've ordered probably 80 books from Amazon from 1800s. It's a book that has 5,000 centuries um, in this particular book. It goes way back to prehistoric almost yeah. time look like and it has so many displays but it's just about getting in um and deep researching um mm -hmm. was it se i think or ebay those types of things because i've even on women of the movement found actual uh early 19th century marcells for mm -hmm. 20 dollars. somebody was selling that we actually used in the scene for um when i was doing a scene mm -hmm. at a salon so i would say buy as many books, get as many trainings, because uh, there's a lot of people out there, especially wigs, learn wig work, learn not with the um, pasting the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, stocking, the stocking cap on the hair oh, and then yeah. putting the wig on top. Not that type of uh, wig uh, application because you won't have that much time to do it. You have to learn uh, true, uh, I would say film and theater uh, applications. Um, trainings. You can mm -hmm. Google those different ones. There are different types because they're different than the um, YouTube and the um, and the Instagram and TikTok application. Mm -hmm. And I've even uh, do m different ones that I've done myself that I just showed me in that moment. Um, like the post I posted today, the young man, I didn't have a chance to um, order a custom wig and his head was too small. And I had to make it work because literally we only had three days. We were over budget and over <laughs> filming yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I had to go pray and say Lord please give me something I can use for his head and found a wig with a textured look added all those braids and that took me three days to braid all that stuff in between doing everybody added the accessories he ended up catching um COVID couldn't come to do a wig fitting so it was day of break 
when I put it on his head, it was this much difference. Prayed and God showed me what to do. I dragged and used his hairline with the edges of the wig. But if I didn't know how to use hairlines, I would have been screwed. It would have never worked. So that's mm -hmm. why I said learn other applications to where you're not gluing down that stocking cap to be your base to blend in. You can use the natural hairline. A lot of times, like on the Young Lady on Women of the Movement, mm -hmm. Adrian hair is here and it was blonde. Nobody knew her only thing that was dark was her roots. And I used her natural hairline to put her wig on. And her wig was not a custom as well. And I actually, when I bought it, that wig was this. <laughs> it was so dense and huge. But yeah. that's another thing, learning how to customize wigs to where it, the right density fits this person's face. And we were trying to match her to Mamie. And so Mamie had a finer texture of hair. Wigs don't come really fine. So I had to cut and really get in there and thin it out to be able to get that curling to where it looked like a real natural head of hair from the 1950s. So those are things that I would say immediately coming in because learning density, taking classes, training as much as you can. The blessed part about things now, everything is online now. But yeah. get with some reliable people that you know that do TV and film because it's so different from salon because it was a power sh it was a whole thing for me mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I had been my own boss since I was 19. And here I am in my late 30s uh, being told what to do. And that's another thing. Learn how to follow instructions. Listen and learn how to follow instructions. That's your biggest thing in this industry. Because yeah. coming in as an artist, what I've learned, a lot of people that are artists don't like to be told what to do. Oh, I thought it looked better with this big way. Or get but, feedback. Yeah, but don't understand that in that meeting, that production meeting, the director don't want that because two scenes later, she's going to be doing something different that her hair can't be in that way. And if it's in that way, we're not going to be able to continue it in the way. You feel me? So a lot of times people come and they play and they get mad. Oh, she don't know what she's talking about. That's ugly. I can make it look like this. But you don't understand. You wasn't in a meeting. There are specifically things that are told. They want it back in a ponytail. You didn't put it in all these beach waves because you think because she got on this cute dress. But she's yeah. a crackhead. Yeah. So would you re realistically see a crackhead with big beach waves? Fabulous. Dog Where's she going to get the crown? So there's a movie or a TV show. Yes. <laughs> I'm not even going to say the name because everybody was talking about the same thing, I believe. But it was during the apocalypse mm -hmm. and you see this beautiful girl with um, box braids all the way down to her bottom mm -hmm. and no new growth, but was born during the apocalypse. Where did she get that hair from, boo? Where did you get it from? <laughs> Who's braiding her hair? Who has a braid still on? Who has time to do that during the apocalypse? Like... Because some people don't know the difference between dreadlocks and braids. So they're they giving us the same thing, thinking it's, and I'm like, let me go look real quick in IMDb to see the color of the hairstylist and the wig and the key. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that those are the times well. when you're like, hmm. The character development and understanding mm -hmm. the who the character is, what the character is doing, mm -hmm. uh, what ethnic group, what what all these things. We have to, we're required to do that, but sometimes people don't. And then other cultures that don't co know cultures, I try to implore that as well to people. If you don't know, please find people that you know that know. There are people that know everything. <laughs> There's somebody that you can Google that can tell you how to do something that you don't know how. I mm -hmm. promise you mm -hmm. across the board. That's in mm -hmm. every genre, every type of job that you do. But you know what most people don't want to do? They don't want to ask for help. They want to seem like they know everything. I research crazy because I do want to know everything. But mm -hmm. I also know that I don't know everything. And I'm not afraid to go ask. And I'm sure not afraid to go dig. You're not going to find nothing that is not based accordingly to a period, a time, if it's some type of um, monster or somebody because even on like Lovecraft, we was based in the 50s, but we went future and then we came back and all that. Yeah. It's still read correctly because I made sure that I re researched and I broke it down and I went to the showrunner. Give me your input of what you were writing and why you wrote this like this. And do you want this person or are we have we mm -hmm. jumped to the future? Have we did this and come back? 
And if you go back and see that episode with Anjanu that we spoke about, you see she had the blue hair and the blue bob. They forced her into the future because of the color, but they wanted to keep her in a, a period of hairstyle to keep mm-hmm. the story still going as if she walked into something, but she's still in a period. Yeah, it so was neat because it was like things. what they would think the future would look like, yes. not necessarily what the f- we yes. know what the future hairstyles yes. really look like. That's what I got from it too. Yes. I think I remember the blue bob uh-huh. type wig and the, <laughs> the little yeah, flip. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, oh, and you know how many blues I went through to get to that good blue. <laughs> that was a beautiful cobalty yes. blue. <laughs> that was a that was yeah. a concoction girl. <laughs> I mean, is there nothing that Andrea can't do? Miss Mona Bowman, there's not. So um, you've done a lot of period piece. you got to do a little sci-fi with um, Lovecraft. And Lovecraft. What, what, is there anything that you haven't done yet? Not necessarily a type, not necessarily a film or a person you want to work with, but is there something that you're still like, I want to do in the hair world, whether it's I don't know, fashion weeks or anything. Like, is there still something that you haven't done that you want to do? Well, well, I've done fashion stuff as well. That Mm -hmm. was before the film, but I'm actually, um, because I started my own um, business, um, Mona Beast Production, (laughs) this year. And um, that's going to be part of um, that journey. Um, uh, For my trainings, I'm going to start doing trainings full time for people that want to learn hair and have different types of panels and different things for makeup as well and costumes connected because that's the court, what I call the heartbeat of um, production. So I want to try to touch bases with not just my, uh, my department I'm so accustomed to use uh, to work with because mm-hmm. when you learn other uh, departments, especially ones that are so closely knit, it teaches you how to flow. And that's what I want to be able to teach those that are coming in or those that are in that don't have enough experience, but really want to get down to the nitty gritty. And that's what I'm teaching tricks and stuff like that. Also developing content and um, creating content um, under my new um, production company and also doing mobile hairstyling services for weddings and events and red carpets and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, so the energizer into, tapped, never stops is what I'm hearing. No, I didn't tap into pretty much anything that the yeah. beauty market and offered. I have experienced it either in the beginning of my career or now, but now I'm trying to wear around it all around uh, education and mm-hmm. giving back more so than just having the opportunity for myself. Mm-hmm. That's always been my intent because God told me he brought me into this um, industry to be able to be a light. So that's what I try to do. I try to help those that want it for the right reason. Those that are trying to think they're better than themselves and, oh, I do, fa-. baby, that's not it because we work. Yeah. People don't understand. When we did emancipation, we was out in them swamps. I walked on set one day coming straight right. in hot Mosquitoes and an alligator, alligator came out the water. And then the people jumped and grabbed him. I was like, oh, okay, God, what did I just sign up for? Okay, see, I was just thinking like mosquito bites. Oh, no, no, no. Mosquitoes <laughs> and, and mosquitoes. And alligators. No, mosquitoes are the, the least of my concerns, girl. You know, we're from Louisiana. Girl, them alligators, though. I'm not lying. It was one day Will was actually about he did the scene where he's leaning back when he went under the water and fought the alligator and came up. Mm -hmm. We shot the scene, everything. You know how now we finna move to the next place. Soon as they move that thing, guess what pops up? A nice nice big old black water moccasin. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Wait, that could have poisonous. Never mind. For a minute there, I was like, oh, oh yes. not so bad. Wait, mo- mm, oh, mm. Yes. black rat snakes oh, are yes. poisonous, but those oh, are. Yes. Those are scary. Oh, they are. And God was with us. And, you know, they had wranglers and all that. But, you know, that's nature. And we're out there. Mm-hmm. And that's why they try to have as much as they can and had us on. We were on guard our whole time because we was on this little walkway of things where we can control the environment. They blocked off everything. But Nature gonna do what nature gonna do. Yeah, nature doesn't know what sidewalks are meant, exactly. aren't meant for them. And that's, and that's what they yeah. did. Nature nature did what they wanted to do. But it was a lot of that, like people don't understand when it's raining and cold in those scenes, hair, makeup, wardrobe, and grips and directors, all of us, we're out there in that those elements. And that's another thing for um 
especially new hairstylists. They say they want to get out in them streets. And I'll be like, okay, baby, you do know it's not a controlled environment where you can go in and turn that air on and turn that AC off. You're in the rain. You're in the storms. You're in the, oh, my God. I mean, I the fact that she was covered in all that goo. I remember oh, yeah. in, um, gosh. Underground. Yeah. Well, no, not underground. The other oh. one with her, Journey Smollett. Um, you were just talking about it with Anjanu. Oh. Well, with Anjanu? Yeah. Um, but in that movie where she's like, she's got, I can't remember what character it was, but they got covered in the red slime. Oh, yes. Yeah. And yes. all that. And then they that had. Love Lovecraft. Yeah. And the, yeah. And like. Yeah. And just I, think I about for me. Yeah. The, the young lady, she had on a wig too. And we had to do take after take. So I had to come up with all these different things to be able to take that stuff off and not let it stain the hair or the skin. It's a whole thing. And you have to be alert and be able to know to be able to put that stuff back together because mm -hmm. they can go back to the trailer and get all refluffed. But it has to be seamless. So when the editor comes to edit, it has to look like it looked before. So it's a lot. That's and why you I'm do an offering, amazing job. And that's, that's why, why I'm offering the classes because it when people really and I try to tell people, try to take some classes that you can really see what it takes to make TV and film. And I didn't know like when I did Great Debaters, which was my first one, I remember we did this dance sequence and it took us two weeks. And I remember going to the theater and seeing it and I was so excited. And I was like, oh, because I did background then. And I was just like, oh, I can't wait to see all my people. And girl, that two weeks turned into a hot, if 25 seconds, I was like, oh. hold up, wait, wait, hold up. I know they finna. And yeah. I said, oh, okay, this is what they do. And I learned from yeah. that experience that that's why you have to be very detailed in your continuity and making sure. I even teach that and because I'm uh, preparing a book. I'm, I'm making a, a, a pamphlet, a, a workbook that people can use about continuity as well because you see a lot of films now and you see what continuity is kind of It's kind overlooked. of my fun game. <laughs> like overlooked yeah. and you're sitting there watching and you're not even a real filmmaker and you can be like, I had one like that. Wait a minute, mm -hmm. how about makeup? She didn't have, she didn't have that outfit. What? You will not oh, okay. think of the man who <laughs> likes to spend his budgets on everything but wigs and um, writers. But I've heard that sometimes when you're working in such fast, that's it. I mean, I'm, let me back up. So a lot of like films, they don't get the same budget or timeline as a lot mm -hmm. of big budget films that mm -hmm. don't star predominantly black people. So mm -hmm. they're also working a lot faster with a lot less and a lot less time. Cause I mean, I, I know a couple of my dad's films were only done in 40 days. So it's like, mm -hmm. and they're blockbusters. So that's when you're working that fast, Ooh, but there are some perks. So can you, because we've gotten a lot of the, oh, pitfalls and pitfalls <laughs> and things we need to learn, but what are some of the great perks? Because seeing you at doing all these things when you were um, on the short list for the Oscars was the coolest thing was I've ever seen. Experience I too. <laughs> so can you talk about some of the perks of dealing with alligators and snakes? Oh my, yes. or even the celebrities egos that could be just as bad or directors who knows but well for me mm -hmm. i would say it's the creative part of it mm -hmm. i have loved tv and film my mom says she wasn't shocked because my first love was acting and dancing and performing i wanted to be an actress so i was always intrigued with the moving screen of tv so for me it was the creative part i taught my fifth grade class thriller, painted their face, tore up their costumes, everything, taught them the routine. We did a whole ensemble. I did all that and I was the lead in fifth grade. So I was that girl. I'm a daughter of a school teacher. So my creative juices, she always allowed me to just create whatever I wanted to create. Yeah. So the creative part of this is for me because when I wanted to do in hair, because I know a lot of people think, oh, she must wanted to do hair her whole life. No. Never thought in a million years I would be doing anybody's hair. But my mom couldn't do my hair. And I pray, Lord God, if you just teach, let me learn how to do my hair. I promise you, I would do everybody's hair. And didn't know he was little. Because <laughs> from that seventh grade experience, yeah. doing my cousin's first haircut turned into my whole life of always doing people hair just to make them feel good because in my hood, you know, people didn't have the type of money to always get their hair done. So I started doing my friends and I did everybody for the prom and everything. It just went from high school to college. And then 
met my cousin one day. We both with two kids in the projects and I had to drop out of school because I was pregnant. And she was like, let's go to beauty school. And I was like, why not? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, that ain't my goal, but I'll do it for you because I know this will help you get out of the project as if I ain't in the project, <laughs> that part. <laughs> but listening to the lady going through the tour of the school and the lady said, you know, if you're a good hairstylist, you can make up to a hundred thousand dollars a year. I said, "Excuse me, ma'am. Um, I can do what?" <laughs> <laughs> and that was in the '90s, so I'm calculating carrot and one and carrot. It. I said, "Oh yeah, we finna do this." And I said, "Cause well, I'm in here for you." Didn't she ain't know all the time? I really didn't have no interest in it, but at that moment, it changed the game for me because I knew then I could control my dynamic because mm-hmm. it was up to me how many skills I could learn could take me to another level. And the question is, how many times have I made $100,000? It ain't nobody but God. But that was me being faithful to the craft. But the creative side of this, I think the the traveling for me, mm-hmm. <laughs> the traveling is, is the, a, a great perk for me. Sometimes it can be a down thing because you don't get a chance. Sometimes you miss a lot of family stuff. So for me, the family part of it sometimes hurt me or I have to almost kill myself to go back home, <laughs> fly in or drive 13 hours one way to get to see my son's mm-hmm. graduation or this and this and that. It can do mm-hmm. that as well. But the perks of traveling is being in new cities, learning new people, learning, learning new events, seeing cities on somebody else's dime. Girl, that's always Look, been my little him. thing. Yeah, and we don't want to talk about that bird. <laughs> She's cute. She that's a whole nother thing. My son used to tell me, like, mom, don't worry about it. You ain't missing nothing. Go and go get that check. And mm-hmm. I was like, boy, you something else. He was like, just get that per diem and send it to him. I bought a call with a per diem one time. So you see the purse. I so mean, yeah, if and, you can do it, go and you the money, <laughs> And exactly. And the money and you know, for me, it's it's more so the creative side of it. Cause to mm-hmm. see a character on paper. And then you see it come to life in front of you. Oh, my God. And it could be some of the simplest stuff. But I promise you, I'd be so excited because like right now in my prep, I'm just I have these visions in my head of what I want these yeah. people to look like based off of what uh, the director already sent and said that he want. But I want to put my little spin on it. And I cannot wait. I can't sleep now because it's processing in my head when I get this wig put on his head and thin it out and do the things that I have to do I cannot wait to see him in his costume and come in and then turn into this person that's like the highlight of my whole job just to see Mm. that kind of stuff like it is And it, it, and it and you would think that I haven't done it like ever the way the I mean, that's every every show, right? If you love what you do. Yes. Every show, every character, even the background. I know some people be like, oh, the background. I'm very intentional, even with my background. Like, Mm -hmm. I love to make people feel good and welcome because every, I feel like every component of that set coming off that piece of paper is very vital and important. So the, for the watcher, because I'm a watcher as well. So mm-hmm. when I watch a show, I'm not just watching it. I'm intrigued into this character. I was looking at um, a couple shows today and I hadn't seen the second season, but I was a part of the first um, season. And I was just sitting there just in groped into it, talking to the TV. My son came in and he was like, mom, you are really a, a movie watcher. Like you be in it. I'm like, bro, I'm serious. I love film. I love storytelling. And my friend girl, when she went with me to the Oscar um, contender thing, and I was telling her, I said, I don't understand how people don't really be passionate about creating these characters. And she said, Mona, the difference is you are a real filmmaker. You're not just a hairstylist. You a filmmaker. She said, that's the difference. And I said, girl, you're right. Because when you're a filmmaker, you're really concerned about every component of Mm -hmm. this because my component, it's just as vital as the grips part. Just yeah. as vital as the director's part. Just as vital as the actor's part. Yeah, we and it keeps you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it keeps you in tune with what, like, the different styles and looks. And like, I never understood when I meet people who work in the entertainment industry, and I'm like, yeah, I don't own a TV. I never go to. Me. Then why are you in this? <laughs> like, so honey, so why are you it's here? Like, I, I, it, it's just, it, I, I, I love yeah. it. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. I love TV and film. I love fashion. I love fashion shows. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. music videos. I love anything 
especially I photos, girl. Watching, whether it's Look. on TV, film, everywhere. <laughs> I just love seeing beautiful things. Come yes. to life. I love getting inspired by other people, seeing yes. the way they live, work, dress. All of, I was a sociology major in college, so it's like right up my alley, all of the things. Yes. And like you were saying earlier about you're all, like always learning stuff. And pre- That's me. I mean, I'm always like, oh, I could do this. I could Because I'm also ADHD. And I'm like, oh, I'm good at this. But I am mm-hmm. good at a lot of things. Be- but it's like, because I just have that thirst for knowledge and learning yes. new things. And that's what I think the film industry gets you to do. You get to play all these different parts, even when you're behind the scenes, because you're never just mm-hmm. a hairstylist. You're also a therapist, mm-hmm. <laughs> a wrangler. You know, sometimes you get pushed into the scene or you get, oh, I'm a producer. I've been producing for years. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I have told so many times and structure so many things because they don't mm-hmm. understand. And that's what another thing that I'll be trying to tell the producers, yeah. y'all really need to get in close to like the heartbeat, which is hair, makeup and wardrobe. Learn how we work, because if you understand how the heartbeat works, your body will be fine. You will know how it flows. But a lot of producers don't know because like even on Lovecraft one time, they tried to get us to make them look like those zombies that that episode with a ghost where she was surrounded by the ghost. It took four to five hours for them to put all that stuff on them with the neck ate out and the lady head all cut up and all that kind of stuff. But they wanted us to do that and then go back and then go back. And I'm like, no, shoot all the stuff that they, we can make them quicker without the stuff. Then let them eat lunch. Go and then get into that character. Then you shoot all of that. I said, mm-hmm. oh, Mona, that makes sense. I said, duh. I said, so you think we're going to take five hours before, shoot 35 minutes to an hour of stuff, break them down, have to clean it back up again and then go back? Bro, that's not happening. Not in one day. Unless mm-hmm. you're going to get us another 24 hours. And he was like, you're right. Oh, that sounds like golden hour. <laughs> and when he came back, he was like, girl, thank you so much. Are you producing? Did I say, yeah, I produced this one. Thank you. Let's get it done because I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. You can just give me that money. I just saved you. <laughs> that part. <laughs> we all connected, bro. Just At the end of the day, okay. We just got to get we just got to get this yeah. shot done today. And I want it to look great. And that's the other part. A lot of times they don't even know those prosthetics and hair pieces and all that stuff. It has a time zone, you know, it has a time frame. It'll expire. It doesn't care that. You haven't got the shot if you had it on six hours and it only lasts five hours. Yeah. It don't care. (laughs) All right. Well, I want to make sure everybody knows how they can keep up with you, how they can follow you, where they can see. I mean, I posted now about just follow uh, follow you on Andromona Bowman. But is there anywhere else? Because I didn't know about your new production company. I missed that. Yes, this just happened this year. (laughs) I just got official come January. So this is really freshly new. And oh, is so, that a Capricorn yeah. month? Oh, wow. Huh. <laughs> know you know, I have two, you know, I own two. My oldest and my youngest <laughs> is Capricorns. Yes. So, you know, I live and my sister I live for a good Capricorn, darling. I mean, darling. What, what is this? <laughs> on the but you know, I'm a Leo <laughs> though, darling. That We're the best ones of them all, darling. <laughs> I mean, my mother's a Leo, so it's so fitting. So I know you love us, darling. <laughs> I call her every but day, yes. all day. Favorite person. But, yeah. <laughs> but you guys can follow me. Same, like she said, Andrea Mona Bowman on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. I keep it all the same. So it's easy to find me. And you can email me if you need to ask any questions or you can DM me. Ask any questions. I take time out to answer, talk, communicate. If I can help you, I can. If I can't, I ain't. But I have all intent. So just feel free. And my email is Andrea Bowman 7319 at Yahoo. And you also can reach me, I forgot, on monobeproductions.com as well. All right. One last thing, because um, you never, oops, let me try that again. Okay. One last thing, because I don't know if you can answer this or not, but do you have any clue when the Color Purple musical might come yes. up? Yes. We we have word on the street that it will be December. That's all I can give you, December. Yes. And we just got the word that it's one of the, the top 10 most anticipated films of 2023. It's going to blow you guys' mind. I cannot. This is This is one just as sweet as Women of the Movement, Emancipation was to me. This one is, it's, it's mm-hmm. going to be timeless. You, you're not mm-hmm. going to expect it. And I have to admit, because I'm a purist sometimes, I don't usually like reboots. There's very mm-hmm. few I think I do like. But you pulled me in when you mentioned 
all the things you mentioned. So people mm-hmm. out there, I know some of you might be like me, like don't like reboot. Well, your... well, this is the musical movie. This is the musical, right? Yes, it's this not is the what was um... originally made yes. before that the film was made after. Yes, technically. So yes. technically, so okay. we we went from that to then they went to the film and then they turned it to the musical movie. So the components of the film and the musical is. All I'm going to say, we worked our mojo on that thing. Yeah, it's When I tell you it's beautifully done, mm. I, I, I've never been more proud. I've, I've been proud of a lot of stuff, but this yeah, one I'm nice. anticipating just like you guys are because I already know just from what we shot, but to see it put together once it's all put together, I know my heart is just going to melt. I mean, I you've never been wrong that. yet because you told me oh, about no. it, <laughs> and then, you're right. You told me about one. I'm, right. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie because you Look, know one thing about me. I love everybody. But if it ain't it, I'm gonna say mm mm cha. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you because I love watching movies, but there's there's so much now. So you gotta there's a time and a place for every type of movie. And if it has Andrea Mo- Mona Bowman's name on it, if you see her IMDb page. If she's working on it, it's worth it to try it. I mean, you can't go wrong. It's probably going to be an Oscar contender or an Emmy contender or <laughs> NAFTA or all the things in between. So ben, thank you so much for coming back to the East thank Spot. You. And we'll have to have you back in 2024 so you, we can talk all the things about the color bubble that we can't talk about now. Yes. Thank you so much, beautiful, for your time. Thank you, guys, everybody that joined. I appreciate your support. And thanks again, Camille. You're the best. Always. And on that note, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the East Spot with Camille. I will say next week is a little iffy and we might, I might be going on hiatus to deal with some other off camera stuff, but um, know that every Thursday it's either 12 o'clock or seven o'clock. You can catch a new episode live or you're going to get the replay at seven. But today we did it live. (laughs) Because <laughs> now my girl is busy and when she is home, she is taking care of her family. And that is a okay with me because family's first. <laughs> all right, uh, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you follow my friend. All of the information is down there. And thanks again for tuning in. And make sure you share this with a friend and a friend and another friend. And then that's friend's friend. And keep sharing it until you can't stop sharing it. And then when you're still sharing it, you should be sharing it. And while you're sharing it. be tripping. she be whipping. Ain't no more no granny couch. Fashion over got that air looking different. Make me want to put her all in my mentions. Feeling like she was sent from above. Got me asking the Lord for forgiveness.